So now let's take a look at the sequencer. If I head over to our sequencer button, you can see that we're greeted by a step and play area. This top blue section is, represents our 32 step sequencer and this orange area down below represents our play area. You'll notice that my drums don't play anything because I haven't armed the track. So let's head to session mode, record arm, click on our drum channel, which in my case is the first channel, head over to the sequencer and I'll now find that we have some drums. Again, inside of sequencer mode, just like we did with note mode, we have various different views. So when we have a drum check uh, armed and, and ready, we see a drum view. When I arm a synth channel, uh, we have a note mode where we have each of our notes going up the channel there. And of course, just like we can sequence drums in, we can sequence notes in, which is a really handy tool when you wanna just fiddle around with some notes and try some different versions and uh, wipe that out, try again, and, and just kind of build as you go. It's a really nice way of getting creative. When we're inside of our drums, I can of course press shift and sequencer to access our sequencer settings. Now along the top right hand corner here we have our three sections. So we've got drum, scale and chromatic which are our different views. Um, you see a nice representation of those views here on the right so you can see that those eight orange squares represent our drum mode. When we head over to chromatic it's got that and when we head over to scale we can see that it's discluded some of the notes and only has some notes in the scale. Of course, today we're going to be using our drum mode because we're going to be sequencing drums. So now we've discussed some of the features, let's record some drums in with our sequencer. To do so, simply hold the sound that you want to sequence and pencil in where you want the drums. So I'm going to put a snare over here and I'm going to put some kicks. Let's see how that sounds. And I think I'll add one more kick there. No, I want it there. There we go. Yes. <laughs> That's what we're looking for. <laughs> of course, you can also uh, live record into a sequencer. So again, let's hit our sequence button. We can press play. Simply pressing this capture MIDI button, I could then record some notes in. And then we have our notes there. Of course I can hold the sip there and we can see the notes that I've penciled in. We could potentially pencil in some extra ones if we wanted to add some extra notes to that. Let's put that there and see what it sounds like. Happy days. It's a good time to mention that our sequencer operates in a standard four channel mode. And what that means is that we have one, two, three and four channels with which to sequence. And where this sequence information is sent to depends on the settings that we set. So as a standard, that is set to channels one, two, three, and four. So where at the moment I have a synth set up on channel two and a bass set up on channel three, any sequencing I do inside of here on channel two will send and sequence my, we'll call it, it's an organ sound, our organ sound. And on channel three here, this will sequence our drums. That's a lie. This will sequence our bass lines. You can, of course, set these settings individually if you want to send it to a different MIDI channel. To do so, simply hold shift, click the sequence button, and you'll be groated, groated, and you'll be greeted by our setting scene that we saw earlier. Along the bottom here, we can see, again, channels one to eight on the MIDI channels represented, and I can select our MIDI channel. So we're on one, if we wanted to go to two, there, three, four, so on and so forth. We're gonna stick with one today. I'll head to my sequencer, I can check to channel two, and now we can see that we've got number two selected. Again, head to my sequencer, channel three, and you can see that we've got channel three selected. So we can send the MIDI information where we want, which is particularly important for you guys using outboard gear because your pieces of gear might not have interchangeable MIDI channels, it might be set. So you'd need to look in your instruction manual, okay, my synth operates on MIDI channel two. So I know that anything I want to send to the synth, I will put on MIDI channel two, and so forth and so on. Your drums might be on free, you're gonna be able to completely customize that and have the full level of control that you want that matches your gear. So let's demonstrate penciling in some notes. I'm gonna record um, my synth channel so that we can hear it. In fact, I'm gonna go for the bass channel. I'm gonna to head to my sequencer and I'm gonna click on channel three. Now we can see that I've got my notes there. So if I want to sequence a note in, I'll simply hold it and click it. Now when I play, you can see that I've got that note there. Perhaps I want, so dun dun dun, let's put a note there, 
Nope, let's put it there. There we go, and put this one there. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, a bit, a bit, a bit late, so put it there. Dun, 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 bum, bum, bum. Let's put another one there, another one there, and another one there. So you can see there that we can sequence our notes in. But what if we want a note to sustain a little bit more? Simply hold the note and click along. Now this note is going to last for three steps. Ah, so if I do that to each of my notes, we can see that we've got, ooh. And we can do that on a note by note basis. It's a really great way of programming in notes and bass lines. And again, I know I keep coming back to this word, but getting kind of to get your creative flow and, and really get your hands on rather than bogging down with piano notes and things like that, you can kind of pencil in and see what sounds right and, and work with it. And of course, as, as I said, along the bottom here, we're only seeing notes inside of our scale. So it's a really great way to do it without so much musical theory knowledge. So now we've penciled in some notes and created our patterns there, we can start worry, uh, thinking about patterns. Now we use patterns to create a track from different clips and scenes. So if I click my patterns button here, we're now greeted with the four channels that we talked about in our sequence here, with channel one, channel two, channel three, and channel four. Each one of the squares represents a pattern. So at the moment we have a drum pattern loaded in on, on this clip here, and we have a bass pattern loaded in on this clip here, clip three. So to select my patterns, I simply select, click on the first, first pattern in channel one, and the first pattern in channel two, and now when I press play, I'll hear those two scenes played together. Yeah. But what if I want to chain together a couple of different patterns, okay? Well, let's say I duplicate this pattern to this scene. I'll then click into that pattern, go back to my steps, I'm already at my drum sequence here, so I can now see that we've got the drum patterns penciled in. I'll unpencil my kick, and this time we'll just go to a simple four to the floor. And the snare's already there. So now, if I press both of those, and we'll find out if this is the case, I should press play, it will play my first pattern, and then move to the second pattern. Let's test that theory. It worked! Happy days! You can do that across multiple sets of sounds. So let's say again that I duplicate up my bass sound into scene two, and that by clicking on scene, then going back to steps, selecting the right channel, which is channel three, um, and I decide that this time I don't want the note sustain that we put on there last time. Simply, I simply undo all my sustain notes. And now I should have one that has some sustain on it and one that has none. So we'll head back to our patterns, we'll click those four, we'll press play. And then our sustains and our four to the floor are now gone. So we can now have to see how we can start chaining those patterns together. We can of course save those chains together by simply clicking our chains and then clicking a bank here. And along the bottom two rows here, we have our chain banks, we'll call them. Now, if I click this chain and press play, we'll have that pattern chain that we've just created. We can save multiple different chains, and we can, of course, chain together different chains, which sounds peculiar. But let's say I duplicate our first drum beat onto the third kit, click on it, head to my steps, head to the channel one for our drums, find my hi-hats and decide that this time I want hi-hats to come in all over the show, a few extra hi-hats, and then head back to my patterns. And in our bass line, we want our second, third pad to be no bass line. So this time we should be able to create a chain that plays our first beat, our second beat, and now our third beat, and our first bass line, second bass line, and then no bass line. Let's test that theory. Click all three, load it into scene two, Click scene two, and press play. Hey! It's almost like I'm learning how to use it. <laughs> so we've seen there that we can chain our patterns together and create a chain 
clip at the bottom here. And finally, you can chain together the scenes by simply holding the first one and turn the second one. And now we can press play. It's gonna play our first scene and then our second scene. Now it's gonna go back. And this time it will progress all the way to our third pattern. And you can see you can do that as many times as you like to chain together as many patterns and as many scenes. And now I've heard it's battery change time. So now we've looked at patterns and scenes and chaining our scenes together, it'd be useful to know how to take some of our sequence information and put it into Ableton. It's a fairly simple job. Simply head to session mode, simply hold shift and click the desired clip, head back to my sequencer mode, I've already selected the pattern that I want to print and I'm going to simply press this print to clip button. You can now see that our clip has nice and handily popped into Ableton. If I want to launch that clip, I can simply head to Ableton, press play and select the clips that I want to play. And at the end of the bar, the quantization section it has, they start to play. We can of course set those quantization settings inside of Ableton. So if I double click on a loop, you see on the right left hand side here that we have our uh, uh, various settings for the clip. I can sit, or click on this L to activate the launch section and you can see here that we've got it set to global quantization. However, I can set this to be whatever I want. So if I want that to only be able to come in every eight bars, I'll set it to eight bars. If I want that to be able to come in at any single one bar point, I can select one bar. Right down to finer details of quarters, eighths, sixteenths parts of a bar, or even none, which means that it will quite literally be launched whenever I hit it. However, to do so, loses your quantization with the rest of the project, so it's better to select a useful quantization rate. I'm gonna switch ours back to global for now. It's worth noting that you can select the global settings inside of the preferences, so you can choose what your global settings are. So I'm clear these all out. I'm gonna head, select my first scene. I'm gonna head to my sequencer, and I'm gonna print my clip to the first one so that I've got it there. I'm then going to head back to my session mode, select my second scene, head back to my sequencer, and this time I'm gonna select pattern two, where we've got our second drum beat. I'm gonna head back to my steps, print to clip, and now we've got my second drum beat ready to go inside of our session view. Head to session view, press play, click on our first drum beat. When it's ready, it will come in. Oh. <laughs> and we can launch to our second one, and back to our first. Those are some quite long quantization settings there. We've covered a lot inside the sequencer setting, which is by far the most complex part of the launch pad. Um, but there are a few uh, other little settings that we'll quickly take a look at. You'll see down the left hand side here that we have Four, one, two, three, four, five, six, definitely not four. We have six function buttons and you can complete the function stated on the button simply by clicking it. This will then override the row here and the row here to be for whatever that is. So for instance, if I click velocity, I can now choose a note and select the velocity from one to 16. I can hit probability and do the same from one to eight for probability. Now what's that going to do? That means it's going to set the likelihood that a note in my sequence will play, which is great for creating some kind of variations within your patterns. So if I hold my first note and click on the first one, this means that there's an 18% chance of that note, whatever it might be, playing. If I hold it and press up here, that means that my note is 100% of the time going to play. Selecting it somewhere around here can create some nice little variations where every now and again that might not play. Here we have the mutation section, which much like the velocity and the probability sections allows us to mutate our sound again based on our probability though. So if I hold my first note and click here, this means that there is a 100% chance that every time my note plays, it will pitch shift by a certain amount. Going down to one means that there's no chance that that will pitch shift. Again, it allows you to create some subtle variations with inside your patterns. Mutation mode works much better for notes, although it can be used for nice little hi-hats if you want to have them pitched, but mostly for notes for creating potentially an arp or something that might have a bit of variation inside of it.
Uh, the final one we have a look here is micro step. Now what micro step allows us to do is select in banks of six uh, micro steps with inside of our steps. So let's head to our pattern steps. We've got our drum pattern here. I'm going to quickly arm my drum channel so that we can hear it. Head back to my sequencer, press play. Perhaps I want to include a trill on my hi-hat. Hi choose our hi-hat, micro step, and I'm going to choose one, two, and three. I now should press play. And you heard that, we had a little trill there, although there's an extra note in there. But again, this is a way to create some variation and add little trilly hi-hat rolls for trap music, things like that. You've got various options that can be dealt, uh, dealt with with using the probability, mutation, and micro step functions. Again, on the right-hand side here, we have our top button here, which accesses pattern settings. This purple row indicates the playback rate. If I have it on one, it's just gonna play our sequence forward. If I have it on two, it's going to play our sequence backwards. If I have it on three, it's going to play our sequence forward, then backwards. Which creates some weird skippy edit over the top. And then if we click on this last one, it's going to play our clip in completely random order. Now I'm yet to find a useful function for this, but if you guys at home find something for us, be sure to hit us up and check it out. Oh, I remember that banger in the club. Modular shit. Uh, modular, yeah. But again, that could be really great for your outboard gear, things like that. I think we've covered all the settings inside of launch, chord mode, note mode, uh, session mode, and sequencer. There's just a few general settings that I'd just quickly like to cover. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, but the play button is play, and the record button is record. You, <laughs> you can do shift and play to continue playing. So you might notice that if I press play, let's take it off random, let's put it nice and conventional forward playing sequence. If I press play, then stop it, and then press shift and play, it will just carry on rather than restarting. That's a useful feature if you want to stop and start, but want to continue without restarting that sequence completely. One of the final things that we'll point out is the projects and save section. Now, if you guys are using this at home with your hardware gear, or even you're using it inside of Ableton, but you want to recall some of those patterns from your sequencer later on, or use them with a different Ableton project, you can simply save everything you've done on the launch pad to the launch pad itself. To do so, to do so, click an empty square, then hold shift and projects, you'll see it flash, press it again, and now it's saved. This is really handy for recalling those projects time and time again. There's one mode on the launch pad that we haven't covered today and we won't cover in much detail. It may be a follow-up video to follow for that, and that's custom mode. Custom mode allows you to dictate how your launch pad works and in what settings you would use it and, and, and what functions are gonna do what. To do that, you download the Novation Components app and inside of that, you can select your very own settings. You can choose what this does and how it does it. So it is fully customizable and you do not have to be limited by the presets that the guys at Novation have kind of selected for their main use. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to drop us a like, drop us a comment in the comment section if you've got any questions and be sure to subscribe. And as always, get in the mix.